And particularly for older people, it is a disaster. You have saved for your retirement, and all of a sudden you have inflation rates, uh, I wouldn't say like Argentina, but uh, uh, much higher inflation rates. But really, this is a trade deal between Fiat World and Cryptoland. And it's a trade deal because the capital that's flowing in to Cryptoland is not permanent residency. The best example of this I can give you is China entering the WTO. Um, that was a classic example of opening up a market that had much higher rates of return and absorbed huge amounts of capital over time. And I think crypto will absorb huge amounts of capital over time. But remember, these people are tourists. These are, this is not even foreign direct investment, FDI. That would be VC money. What this is, is speculative hot money flows into this new economy. And one day it will wash out again too. Wow. Are we having a crypto meltdown or what? Hey, everybody. Thanks for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew. Glad you're here. So we have conflicting opinions from technical analysts such as blockchain backer, credible crypto, many others. We also have conflicting opinions from macro investing legends, uh, Raul Paul, uh, Felix Zuloff, many others. It's very interesting to watch this unfold. So we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to tell you my thoughts, where I think we're at. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing because I'm having fun. And uh, let's get into it. So first, we see tweets coming down from blockchain backer, well-respected uh, technical analyst in the crypto community. I've been I've followed him for a while, and he's made some great calls. And he's also made some calls that are wrong. He's calling for a three thousand dollar Bitcoin. It was in a reply. Uh, someone's I think said something about. Is Bitcoin going to 10K? And he wrote, 3K, 10K is hopium. So can you believe that? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Blockchain Backer is one of those technical analysts that believes the saying, uh, show me the chart and I'll tell you the news. My interpretation of that saying, and I could be wrong, is that everything you need to know is in a, a chart, a trading chart, because you can see that historic market psychology that tells you everything you need to know. In other words, if a chart has a certain fractal with a certain pattern and a certain Fibonacci extension, you know there's going to be a news event coming. You just don't know what it is. So is that true? I don't believe that's completely true. I'm of the opinion, especially when we're talking about that big of a crash, that's a macro level event. I'm of the opinion that technical charts, trading charts need to be taken into consideration with macro indicators and drivers behind the current economy and what could go wrong. Sure, there could be a black swan event. Maybe blockchain backer is seeing that in the chart. Here's one thing I do know. There are chart legends such as Peter Brandt who have made a living only on trading their own accounts for over 30 years, 40 years. And we're talking supporting your family just by swing trading your own account. There's no subscription revenue from YouTube. There's no ad revenue from YouTube. If you mess up a trade, you, you lose it and your family doesn't eat. He was able, if you read his book, if you follow some of his social media stuff, you look around the internet, you'll find he admits my charting, I'm, I'm wrong. I think he said I'm right about 41% of the time. It was under 50% of the time, which sounded weird to me at first. I'm like, well, how could you be wrong more than you're right and make a living only on trading your own account? But it makes sense if you're a swing trader because the idea is you know how to set stop losses. And basically, he, he explained, you know, when I go into a trade, I'm expecting to lose. And so it's all about setting your stop losses there. Even though your losers are going to be a little more than your winners, your stop losses are set right. You're taking profits to the right area and you're able to come out at a profit. But what that tells me is someone who stares at charts all day long, only at charts for swing trading is going to have a good idea about how accurate, how accurate they are. I know some people watching this channel probably don't like Peter Brandt because he doesn't like everybody's cryptocurrency. But you know what he does do? Even if he hates the crypto, he will say, hey, I think this thing's about to blow. I hate this one, but it's about to blow. Pretty fun. Now, we also have some conflicting opinions among macro legends. And particularly for all the people, it is a disaster. You have saved for your retirement and all of a sudden you have inflation rates. Uh, I wouldn't say like Argentina, but uh, uh, much higher inflation rates. If you let the currency go, you end up with very high inflation rates and that creates poverty uh, in an increasing number of the people in a society. And that creates social unrest. Mm -hmm. So I think in the later 20s, we will have 
a social crisis, you'll have an economic crisis, a financial crisis, an economic crisis, a currency crisis. It's all, it's, it's like hell will break loose because we come from a world that has been relatively stable, managed. You know, we had occasional crises, but it was well managed and under control. So Felix Zuloff paints a pretty grim picture. By the way, that uh, Julia Rolero podcast is pretty cool. She has legendary macro investors on there. If you're into macro, highly recommend checking it out. I'm a macro enthusiast. I'm learning. Joined a couple macro groups, paid macro groups to get my chops up. It's fun. It's a lot of work. It's crazy. It's not easy, but I like it. I like it. It fits my investing style because I like longer timelines. But I tend to agree more with Raul Paul on this one. Here is why. Chicken McDugget. <laughs> I love that. Raul, I hear you talk about monetizing the debt and often find myself nodding in agreement until I realize I have no idea what that means. Do you think I do? I don't know. Can you, too long doesn't read, monetize debt? Yes. So, pretty straightforward. You're in debt, Mr. Chicken, and you've got to pay the, your credit card bill at the end of the month. And what you do is borrow money to pay the credit card bill. Now, your debt keeps getting bigger, obviously, because you're using debt to pay the interest on the debt. But governments, they've got another little trick up their sleeve. Because unfortunately, I've checked my HP printer next to me doesn't print money, unfortunately. But the governments have an HP printer that does print money. And it's the money printer goes burr is monetization of the debt. What it means is I print money and buy my own, my own debt. That's monetizing debt. And what that does is debase the currency, the purchasing power of the currency versus scarce and fixed assets. So that's monetization of debt. And it's basically cheating. It means that governments, unlike you and I, don't have to pay their debts. Now, if you're a small economy like Argentina or Venezuela, well, those chickens, Mr. Chicken McDougat, come home to roost. Like your chicken would come home to roost if uh, you kept borrowing money to pay your credit card. But if you're the world's reserve currency, you can do what the fuck you like. And if you're the British, you can pretty much get away with it. The Europeans, almost certainly. The Japanese, oh yeah, you've got all the savings in the world. Do what you want. The Chinese, yeah, who's going to stop you? So that's what happens. Governments can get away with it. They did it to stop the biggest financial crisis of our times turning into the Great Depression. And now they've realized it's the only answer. Monetizing the debt, right? So the government has the ability to print money to pay its own debts. Many of us already know that. And so right now, when you follow some of these macro guys, uh, you can see liquidity is already being injected into the system under the hood. And the reason that's going to happen, well, there's a number of reasons that might happen. For one, we have an election year coming. And so whoever's running is going to want to keep those people in office. The government is going to do everything they can to make sure we do not have some sort of recession, some sort of depression. Obviously, they want to stay in power. And the way to do that is to have a strong economy. And the way to have the economy strong is to inject a bunch of liquidity to prop up asset prices. There's lots of ways to do that with the Fed targeting interest rates and the Treasury drawing on its general account in the Federal Reserve monetizing the debt, injecting liquidity into the system. Could I be wrong? Of course. Could a lot of these people be wrong? Of course. Could blockchain backer be right? Yeah, it's possible. But I know how I'm going to play it. So I think that we are going to see something like this with Bitcoin and then the crypto market in general. Let's look at this gold chart here. And we go to, I believe it was November of 2004. This should be right here. Boom, right here at this little peak right here. You can see right here. I don't know, right there where my mouse is. Now, November 2004, that was a very interesting month for gold. That is when the gold ETF was launched. Now, what did we do? We crashed for how many months? One, two, three, all the way until it looks like June of 2005. So we went down from November till June. We had like about a good six-month Correction. Now, was it an epic crash that went straight down to, I don't know what, from $400 to, well, if you look at the ratio blockchain backers talking about, it'd be probably like 
20, I don't know, under $20, under $10 gold. Did we go down that far? No, we did have about six months of downward, a downward trend. And then look what went on to happen. Now imagine this cycle we're in just starting. We just had an ETF launch. It makes sense that we're going to correct to me. Who knows how far? Could it be in the 30s? Probably. And then look what happens. And in here will be about three months after the Bitcoin happening. I mean, this makes more sense to me than Bitcoin going to three th or yeah, three thousand dollars from forty thousand dollars, basically. I mean, to me, that's a macro event that would reverse this entire these secular trends of interest rates, which could be happening, by the way. Look at that. We've had a secular trend of interest rates on 10 year government bonds. At not, look at bonds in 1980, a 10-year T-note in 1981, August of 1981. You could get 15% on that thing. Imagine buying that here, getting 15% a year, and you're buying it at a huge discount, and then you're able to ride that 15% for 10 years while the value of your bond goes up. Man, that would have been a good play. Now, not many people got that lucky, of course, because if you know, you probably know, many of you do, if you're a macro or minorly, minorly interested in this, is when interest rates fall, it's because bond prices are going up. There's more demand for bonds. And when um, interest rates rise, it's because there's less interest in bonds and you can make more money elsewhere. So these have to become more attractive. Right now, you do see a period here where they are more attractive starting since June of 2020. You know, we know what that we know what happened then. And there is a nice um, uptick here all the way up to five, six percent. Could this now is this going to spike straight up and we're going to start like this all over again from 1951 to 1981? I believe we're going to keep kicking the can down the road. Uh, you, you listen to Raul Paul. What he's saying makes sense to me so far. Now I'm learning and learning and learning. He says we have a couple more cycles. I find it hard to believe that this is a complete trend reversal. I think this this could be something here. Maybe we just go sideways like we did for from, say, 1941 to 1951. Maybe we get up here a little higher, the five, six, seven range and go sideways. I don't think that would take, you know, that to me, does that mean Bitcoin's going to go down to three thousand dollars this year because interest rates are going sideways between five and seven percent? And stocks are kind of flat and bummer. I mean, I don't think that's going to even happen because I think we're just going to try and pump up the economy. The government's going to try and pump it up. They usually are successful at it when they inject a bunch of liquidity into the system. Banks can borrow money cheaper. Businesses can borrow money cheaper. Consumers can continue to spend. Now, will we have a small recession this year? Yeah, probably. I believe we will. I believe we're overdue. I think some of those macro indicators are finally going to come into play. But... I don't think it's going to be a prolonged recession. I don't think Bitcoin's going to $3,000. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to buy some, I'm going to continue to buy some quality projects that I feel underweight on because I've been dollar cost averaging into other crypto projects. So I'm going to be buying some Polkadot. Did a video on um, Polkadot versus Flare Networks the other day. Both are really cool projects in the field of operability. See the link below. I just underweight and Polkadot, nothing against Flare. I think they're really doing cool things. But Polkadot is also a very quality project that I'm underweight in. So I want to get that. I want to get some Avalanche. I want to get some ABAX. A strong gaming narrative. Lots of gaming activity. Lots of subnet growth. So you got Polkadot with probably the biggest developer activity in the entire crypto community out of everything. You've got Avalanche with the gaming narrative and lots of subnet growth, lots of account growth happening there. Very cool stuff. And I might get some more HBAR. I'm pretty happy with my HBAR bags, but what you have there is it's undeniable right now in production, not in theory, the most transaction volume happening on any distributed ledger technology. And so that is very cool. If you look into HBAR, if you look into Hedera Hashgraph, you can see the power of what's going on there, that governing council and how and their approach to um, architecture and distributed ledger technology and why it's really easy for developers to build on. I don't think that thing's going anywhere but up. And I don't think that project is going to do anything else but grow, grow, grow. So I'm excited about that one. Uh, all the other ones I've been talking about here, I'm probably good on for right now. So I'm excited if we keep going sideways and down for the next three, four, five, six months. I believe it's all noise. And I believe we are going to see this probably starting around the end of 2024. So we go sideways and down for a little while. And then maybe five, six, seven months later, look at what Christmas could be like. And then going into next year, 
this looks real. This looks like what's going to happen with Bitcoin and altcoins to me. Okay, everybody. I hope this video finds you well. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.